thing I well, it won't be the last thing I tell you, but one thing you'll enjoy is I did the jumpers. And in the old days, when you started the sport, you had to be able to jump three seven, or you couldn't even go into venting. Well, so I did hunters and jumpers and that. Well, after we did all of that, the farm needed some money. And so there was a, a really wealthy man had a big farm in Culpeper, Virginia, and horses. And, and you know, we had one girl that rode the horses and that. But there were some a lot of horses shipped from York. Nobody wanted to get on. And so to get money, I said, I'll go down because we were getting rid of all the stuff. I said, I talked to him because he saw me at a show. And I said, I'll ride so I ended up going down there, moving down there, and riding stock. And so we went to go to Texas to a big show. Of course, I didn't ride the best one, supposedly, but I wrote, you know, I wasn't afraid to get on to something. So anyway, there was one horse, a gray horse called uh, Igor, but there were th we had three horses. We all went down to Texas. And so now we're at the, the night before the Grand Prix. They have a big country western uh, band come in and get tons of people in a big indoor arena. To watch it and then after they watched it you know they turn the lights all on and say now you can watch a puissance class which is jumping for height so everybody stayed so it was packed so supposedly the guy that owned these horses had his rider he brought down Nor uh, norman della joy really good riders to say you pick whatever horse you want to do here i want you to sit on this what one you would do puissance puissance class well nobody sat on the ones that i was riding for him said nope we're not taking this one this <laughs> one so anyway so in the morning or at that night right when we're a puissance because it was my job i said well you know i'll go you know see who what one i'm getting to ride he had all three horses of mine in the puissance nobody else oh I my went, gosh they're sitting on ones that maybe got a shot to jump you know, so I was like, oh, well, uh, I mean, that's what I'm here for, right? Well, I never jumped a puissance class. I mean, I jumped some big classes in Grand Prix, there, but not puissance. You go until somebody can't jump anymore, you know? And so I was like, uh oh. So anyway, this Mexican guy who's passed away now, his name was Orly De Hoyas, a really neat guy that every now and then would come and help and work for this Charles Ziff. And he was there, and I said, Orly, you got to tell me what to do. i got to ride all three of them in the Grand Prix, and, or in the uh, Puissance, and I, plus i got to do the Grand Prix. I said, there was one horse I loved called 50-50, and I think they ended up, his real name ended up being Sirocco when, when I left. But he was a little horse that could be wonderful. They had a good, just gut. He probably wasn't much taller than this golf cart, but man, he had heart. And so I tried to talk as if I said, okay, listen, I'll run the Grand, you know, run the Puissance you want. But I said, hey, why don't we just save 50-50 for the Grand Prix? He said, nope, you're the only one that's running the Puissance from my stable, so you got to do it. I said, all right. So I said, Orly, what do I do? <laughs> you know, so Orly told me how to ride. He said, when you go to the wall, we start at the wall, and this is when we were about, the wall was raised. What happens is when you jump clean, Everybody jumps clean and, and everybody's out of it. Then they cut a fence or two fences out and they raise them and cut them and raise them. Well, now the wall was six and a half feet. I've never jumped that high, right? And the oxer was bigger, right? And so there were getting to be only two fences. You had a gift fence you could jump. You could jump an oxer that kept widening and raising. And then you could jump the big wall. So uh, everybody knew I was a three-day event rider. They didn't know at that point how sort of bizarre it was and so they orly who really trusted and knew i had a feeling they would say orly that's that three-day rider okay we bet he ain't gonna make it and orly said well i'll bet you well you think he's gonna win or said, yep he's gonna win how much you gonna bet i didn't know this till after that <laughs> class so orly kept betting and betting so all of a sudden it's down to two of us now the wall is at seven feet Oh my gosh. Right? And I'm going. It's a big fence. Oh, it is a big fence. You know, and the ox is about 13 foot wide. I went, uh oh, you only have two fences. I said, I am dead. And the only horse I had left, I got two of them over six and a half feet, so they're in the money, right? But they're done. And the one horse that I didn't think, but every horse, that's why I, eventually I'm going to tell you, every horse has a niche in life and you better listen to him. All of a sudden, this horse. For some reason, like jumping one big thing. He didn't want to do a related distance or anything that good, but you put it up in front of him big. If you rode it right, he was going to take a crack at it, right? So Orly told me, don't grab the first thing you see because you have so much power, right? So anyway, when I'm going in the ring, I hear them saying, Orly, Orly, man, we owe you money. Da -da. Come on, you got to bet something. That's all I heard. So I go in. The guy before me, there's only two of us left now. 
The guy before me, he jumps the oxer, but he makes the turn to that seven foot wall in the middle and everybody's quiet, you know. He has a stop. All right. Then he turns and he cracks at it. He pulls it down. Right. Now I walk in the ring and I hear him talking this early, you know, but that's it. So I go. Right. And I think, man, you know, so I make the 13 foot oxer. Right. Now, quite hot day. He was on the wrong lead. I said, forget the flying change lead. I'm going to trot, pick up the right lead and then down the center line. Well, as God would have it. Sure enough, I see the distance, and all he said, don't grab the first thing you see, and then it's seven foot. Nobody had to tell me to look up. <laughs> I was looking at the top. So I see that the distance that I shouldn't take because the wall's a power fence, that big a vertical. So I say, I got to wait one more time. So And all he said, even if he stops, don't worry. But he said, don't grab the first thing you see. Well, you know, I don't like stoppers, so I was closing everything I had on my leg and holding everything. And the pictures of this horse, went, and it's dead silent to me, right? Because everybody's quiet, right? His hocks were touching the ground and his fetlocks and that because he had so much power to jump up. And I'm hanging in the air like this, right? Oh my and all of a sudden I hear the crowd yell, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I, and I was like, oh, man, I was amazing. <laughs> and so I softened the rain, and he landed, and I won. That's amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. And I couldn't believe it. It was funny because all the, the Grand Prix riders were going, man, you rode off of that thing good. I said, I was more going to it than going <laughs> off. I said, what do you think? said, what do you mean? I said, well, in a venting in advance, you have to do six and a half foot drops. I can ride off a drop. I said, I didn't know how to do the height <laughs> because all of them had trouble off the drops. So anyway, so I go out. I was so excited because I won it. And so I'm petting my horse, you know, that big gray horse. And, you know, and I was always carried a little piece of carrot in to give him good. And I'm giving him carrots and I'm going, Gosh, dang, I won a class, you know. And, or, and I said, well, I get ready to walk in. And Orly, this really taught me, okay. Uh, Orly said, where are you going, Ralph? I said, hey, man, I won. I'm going in and get my ribbon, you know. And pick up the paycheck for the owner and that. And he said, uh, no, you're not. I said, they're calling me. He said, you don't want that. You have a Grand Prix tomorrow. You don't want that horse to go in that Grand Prix thinking everything's seven foot. He said, you go out there. We're going to jump a nice four-foot fence out in the warm-up area. So he thinks, man, maybe that wall wasn't as big effort as I thought. So you'll be all right tomorrow. So I thought about that all night after he said it. But when I'm walking in, I'm hearing all these guys talking to him. You know, and it was good. I went and I go out and I say, Orly, what were these guys talking to you about? He said, because he said, I just, you just made me $30,000. I went, what? <laughs> he said, yeah. He said, everybody said you were a three rider and I'm not going to make it. And I said, hey, this boy knows what he's doing. <laughs> I didn't tell them that. I said, yeah, he's a three-day rider. He runs and jumps and he knows how to ride those horses that are flat and fast. You know, he said, I just lied my tail off. And he said, they bet me. And he said, right before you went in. I, I had them $15,000 that were owed me. So they were saying, Orly, 15000 man, come on. He's still in it. We're still betting for that jumper rider. Give us a shot. And Orly said, I believe so much in you. I looked at him and said, double or nothing. <laughs> and, oh. and, and so he said, they owe me $30,000. Well, back in the old days before I got reborn, even though it took death before God finally reborn me, uh, what I said to Orly, I said, because I was only getting about, 25 or 50 bucks to ride the horse at seven foot. I said, Orly, do I get any of that 50,000? He said, Ralph, I'll tell you what, you rode so well, tonight I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> I said, well, thank you, Orly, I'll take yeah. <laughs> So that's what happened. So anyway, that I did that, but out of all the sports, the steeplechase and everything I did, and, and I was an A pony clubber, but you everything plan? that I did, you know, I just love the, the sport that where you're interviewing me at now. There's something about doing the dressage. Now, as a kid, when I did all that sit trot stuff, I said, the only reason I'm doing the dressage is I want to get out there and run and jump. Right. Yeah. Right? So, so that's the way I started. Then I started learning through the good men, Colonel Lundquist and that, the art of dressage. Not to go, you don't want to take them to the point you get total obedience because when you're out there running at that speed at the height I'm doing, you know, they got to believe in you and get to the other side. If you get total obedience and you don't see something, you might not make it. So, and that's what Colonel Lundquist told me. But, it gave me a sense of feeling when a horse is all of a sudden leaning a little left or leaning a little right. It was exciting because you could really, really feel. So I love the sport of eventing. And so, and I'm glad that you're giving me this interview because I pay my dues. You know, I've been to the Olympics. Oh, I've been absolutely. To I've been to Burley. I've been to all of it. And we don't know now. I'm supposed to be dead. But you can see the main man now said, 
Okay, Ralph, you're reborn now. But you know what I learned, learned, which was exciting to me, is I thought, after I thought, why, after I was mangled and in the hospital and the guy beside me died, and that I'm thinking, why on earth didn't God just tell me? Because I love horses so much. If he'd have told me, I wouldn't have done all that stuff because I still love women, but I don't do the bad deed anymore. And I said, if he would have just told me, I wouldn't have drank anymore. I would have just quit because I love the horses so much.